welcome. My name's Amy Barrett Daffin. I'm the publisher at CNT Publishing, and I wanted to welcome you all here today. Um, we are going to have a really informal conversation about um, what you are doing in this time of COVID-19. It is Wednesday, April 15th, um, 2020, and we're just going to chat about what all you wonderful authors are doing during our <laughs> time of sheltering in place and what fun, cool stuff you're making and how you're staying motivated and inspired during this time. And of course, any words of wisdom you have for um, all of our tribe out there. So I'm going to start with you, Shirley. Um, <laughs> you're on. So what are you working on? Well, this gives me a good chance to try something different because every. Most of the time, I'm just working hard on patterns and designs, the next thing, the next thing. But I've found that this actually gives me time to explore some other things, painting and crocheting and making dolls. And it actually kind of reduced my stress in a way because it gave me an excuse to, to lay off the designing for profit and get to something more creative and some things I've never tried before I've learned on YouTube and other classes and I, I really enjoyed that time and so sometimes I'm thinking this is you know just make the best of this time this time that's oh so nerve-wracking but at least there's some good things that can happen I agree I agree so Katrina how about you well, you know, here in Washington, like you in California, we've been on lockdown for quite a while. And um, but the big the big push around here is um, among not only I mean myself, but especially all of our so us here in Washington State is um, mask making, protective and um, personal protective um, equipment. Uh, last week, I actually was cranking out uh, isolation gowns for nurses in a hospital in rural Tennessee. Uh, locally, let's see, our local mask makers have produced over 16,000 masks wow. here in the Spokane area. Um, in Western Washington, I'm sure they produced around that amount, if not more. They're actually cut, working with an aerospace company to cut another 15,000. Wow. Um, so Washington State masks are going all over the world, and I have, I have um, some really awesome tools that I've been using to cut <laughs> stacks of cotton. Um, you know, and you can cut, you know, an inch at a time. So wow. that's quite a few layers. So it's, it, I, I can't say it's, it's been creative in other ways. I mean, work-wise, I've been able to connect with a group of my, my team that I'm working with to put, create an online fashion sewing school. So there's been kind of that kind of creative flow going on, but mostly it's just, um, for me being a sewing professional, helping connect, um, uh, cloth companies and and the makers in the various groups that I'm connected with and things to get keep these masks flowing for people who really need them. So it's it's a it's a weird time, but um, I'm really hoping that this reflects um, well on just how critical sewing is as a life skill. I think that that's yeah. actually a really really good point. Okay, I'm going to jump to Kate. Uh huh. So what are you doing? Wow. Well, um, I'm doing a lot of different things, to be honest with you. I, like everybody else, probably, I've been making masks. Um, I've made them for a local hospital, but also for some of my friends, you know, who aren't sewers, and so I've made masks for them. But I'm also doing some new things. I mean, obviously, all of our businesses are changing a little bit. I'm somebody who normally would be getting ready to go to, like, Colt Market, mm -hmm. and uh, we're not going to Colt Market. So what do I do differently? Um, so I'm participating right now in a blog hop called Clean Your Studio or Spring Clean Your Studio. Nice. Um, and that was really fun because it forced me to spend a little time in my studio, but not producing. And I was able to, you know, clean out. I, I decided to focus on projects. And so I just cleaned out the projects that were in various stages. So the ones that were pieced but not quilted and the ones that were only partially pieced and some that were really old and shoved in the back of you know, a shelf. And doing that was so freeing in some ways because now all the ones that are my potential long-term UFOs, they went in the basement. 
And so what okay. I've got here now is the ones I'm working on. I've got the ones that just needed to be quilted in another pile. And all of a sudden I'm able to be free of that stress of all those projects and feel like I can start thinking about new things. So that was a really fun thing to do. And I'm doing some videos that I don't normally do um, and participating in different online things and trying to stretch myself a little. So from, that's what I'm doing from that perspective. But I also got a lot of projects. So when we're ready, I'll show you those. <laughs> Excellent. Sounds really good. Sounds really good. And what about you, Sheila? Well, um, I've been missing my customers in my shop. So I decided I would do some classes online because usually I have a class day every week. And um, we, you know, people come in and they do all their different projects. So what I decided to do was offer a couple of classes. So I'm doing a real basic, basic quilting right from scratch, which is the class I usually teach to beginners. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been really interesting, really being thorough about how to test your quarter inch seams and how to baste your quilt and all, all the details. <laughs> um, and then I um, decided we needed to do a triangle one to go with the triangle block tool. So um, we're doing a table runner. And so I've done that free. They're both on Facebook Live. So I've been doing those classes, I've been messing around with other projects, I've been learning art online, surface pattern design online, which has been really fun. Um, and just doing all sorts of different things and, and yeah, relaxing and being more creative than normal. As um, yeah, we were saying about not having to keep produce, produce, produce all the time. It's been really cool. Nice, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And what about you, Maria? Hold on. There you go. Yeah. Um, what is that it's right there? Okay. So um, usually I'm on the go traveling a lot. And I had um, a solo show scheduled for the Shelburne Museum in Vermont. So it, for me, it's been really interesting to go from being uh, sort of well overextended to a screeching halt in a lot of ways and just reconfiguring that um, how, uh, how to move forward for, with a very different life pace. And um, part of my life has just been dealing, I have all, three boys and they're all home all the time and that is a lot of food and uh, so a lot of my creative energy has been spent on cooking um, and knitting. I've been doing a lot of knitting and mask making. And just in the last couple of days, have I really settled into a studio routine, which has included um, a really deep cleaning that has been, actually it hasn't happened since I wrote my book for CNT. So it has been a long time and that has been uh that's feeling really good it's appropriate in a way because it's springtime and it feels good to just clean and air everything out so nice so now for some fun um i'd love to do some show and tell who wants to go first okay you're not all jumping up at one time okay i'm picking kate Kate's up first i'm up you're up okay yeah. um so some of the things i'm doing right now is I have six new patterns coming out, but um, I'm doing a signature line with Island Batik, and they were supposed to be shown at Spring Market, so I'm not allowed to show those quilts yet um, because it's a signature line, blah. But anyway, I can show one of the quilts because I also have it in another line. Nice. So let me show you. So in my book that I did with you guys, I had a quilt that had a braid, mm -hmm. and after that, I came up with my own template, the braid template that cuts pieces of different sizes, and every project that I've done, they've only used one size. So what I did was I came up with this quilt. Let me see if I can show you. I don't know if this is going to work. Hang on. Um, I came up with this quilt. I'm so excited for it. I can't wait. I'm actually doing a Facebook Live on it tomorrow. And so it's got all these different braids of all these different sizes. I don't know if you can oh. see this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've got you three different sizes. Bigger and bigger? Yeah. Yeah. So it was really fun to do. So, um, so that's one of my new patterns. And then I'd had a quilt in um, the Quilters Planner last year. 
And so I thought it was time to give it a revamp. So not only am I doing the quilt the way it was done, but I'm adding to the pattern. I'm sure we all do this is when we're doing a revamp, right? And so this is the revamped look mm -hmm. of the quilt. So the other one is much more, you know, drunkard's path than a circle. So I've got all these great colors that I'm using, which is really, really fun. Mm -hmm. oh, so nice. as you can see, I still have a long way to go in piecing. <laughs> Um, and then because, of course, it's, it's freeing right now, right? I'm, I'm not planning the next thing. I can just play and decide what I want to do next. Yeah. So the other thing was I had this wonderful quilt that I had done for a magazine a while back, and I wanted to do it using, um, you know, making other sizes in it. And it was a real modern quilt. Um, it was called, what did they call it? Mountain Joy. I'm calling it Triangle Transparency. So I've been just playing with fabric, trying to come up with some fabrics that I might use for it. So that's just a few of the things that I'm working on right now. Nice, nice. Okay, I'm going to jump to Maria next. Ah, so um, I had, uh, I mentioned that I was working on pieces for the show at the Shelburne Museum, and I was, the goal was to create 13 new pieces. And so one of them you can kind of see behind me there. And um, it is, I do a lot of grid work. And it is a grid, but it's got some triangles in it that um, I just in the last couple of years have really started incorporating triangles into a lot of things. And then I tend to work in units. I make a bunch of units and then those units become a quilt at some point. But it's, so instead of having the quilt designed up front, the units are made and out of them comes the quilt. And I've been building a lot of these units, which, um, there's a section in my book on them. I call them polka dots. Um, and they are, um, you know, for the most part done without rulers. So you can make them at two at a time so that you've got, obviously this has got a green background for the dots and this has got uh, a yellow background for the dots. And building those into a larger quilt. And then I've been spending a lot of time on um, triangles. So uh, wow. a lot of times I will make, I don't know what I've got here, probably 30 of these triangles and they are most likely going to be um, some sort of border in a larger piece. And I think, you know, I like to work on several quilts all at once. Um, so that is three quilts. Yep. So it's really interesting. So you create these components and then you decide what your layout is going to be? Yeah, I mean, sometimes I know um, beforehand because I like, I tend to work a lot on a grid, but um, maybe I make one unit and that unit, like say if I know this is a border and it's gonna go like this, you know, they're gonna form this sort of spiky border, that's gonna determine what the next round is. In this case, it's kind of a medallion. And so I know that that's gonna be one border Then what I put in the next border, I'm gonna build next, but I don't necessarily know until I see what that border looks like. Okay, all right, I get that. Okay, cool. All righty, I am going to jump to Shirley. Okay. Currently, I am doing embroidery pin cushions where you just, you, you, you embroider the center and here's like the next one's gonna be like a little dog. And it's a little bit of patchwork, a little bit of ribbon and pins. And I've been making them for all holidays. Ooh, for Valentine's. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, this way you can quilt um, these uh, pin cushions as you go. I don't know if you can see that, but mm -hmm. quilted. Oh, nice, okay. So, and then this is what the back looks like. <laughs> and then, and, uh, what was that? Did you say you had been painting too? Yeah, I do a lot of painting. Uh, even my dolls are painted. Um, but, and then another project I'm working on is these, um, it's kind of hard to see them. Uh -huh. But they're monthly uh, kitties that celebrate um, the, the feature for the month, like this one, okay. it's the St. Patrick's Day. And then, these are, um, this is May, and uh, each one comes with directions and instructions on how to make the felt flowers. And all the embroidery I do, I like to incorporate a little bit of quilting. And like, here's, here's a painting I've done. Oh, wow. So, 
I like to do dolls and paint. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been working on those. And I've been working on a li little embroidery. <laughs> I don't think you can see it, but it's really always be a little kinder than necessary. I think that is a well said sentiment yeah. right now to be yeah, not, sure. Mm -hmm. So do you have one of the dolls that you work on? And yeah, I'll have my daughter go get it. <laughs> okay, send your assistant out. Yeah, it's on the piano. <laughs> so, I love embroidery, but I do a lot of other things like quilting and um, holiday decor. I love making projects for holiday decor and whether it's okay. a quilt or Right. Here's a little doll that I did. It's funny. She oh, wow. is painted. She's just muslin and she's primitively stitched and she has a little crochet bow, but she's just painted. And uh, I always sell these like hotcakes. It's the funniest thing. This is what I just, I'm just playing. And I always sell them out immediately. And sometimes it's kind of fun to just play, make something. People go crazy about it. And then I can get back to business, you know, with there other things. You go. <laughs> I love it. They're fun. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're different and their faces are really unique. Yeah. I think that's what people get a kick out of. It's they're just unusual and funny. Yeah. They're kind of funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are. They are. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Yeah. We're going to go to Katrina. Hold on. Let me get you. There you go. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, like I said, a lot of my time has been taken up with things I never anticipated doing with the, the masks and things, but, and I'll have to show you here. It's just, I'm swimming in machines. So here's one, whoops, one serger. I've got another serger over here. And let's see, there's a, another machine and my cutting table full of fabric um, for more masks and, trying to get you know my racks organized oh there's my new, new teleprompter so unfortunately not very exciting things to show you just a lot of craziness um going in pretty much every creative direction but um i did decide yesterday that now that some of the um not so fun you know emergency sewing is getting done that you know i definitely need a new wardrobe so i also but if you can't see it because it's behind my my uh rack I've got huge piles of knits that I'm going to surge up to wear on camera. So that's, that's pretty much it. I can't say that I have a whole lot of exciting show and tell at the moment. Like I said, I, I already showed off, you know, my power tools and uh, back of masks. So that's, that's about amazing. it. Can you tell us a little bit about the online fashion, what did you call it? Online fashion school? Well, it's, yeah. I've, so I've registered um, sofashionable.com. And uh, yeah, my, I'm not a quilter. My main focus is garment sewing. And so I'm lucky that I've worked in the fashion industry and just with a lot of wonderful people in the sewing industry as well. And so I have filmed classes for a lot of different online vendors, um, you know, Craftsy slash Blueprint, Virta mm -hmm. Style, Threads, you know, various people. And, you know, I'm kind of tired. Of, I want to do more things for myself um, because, you know, it's when you film for someone else, you know, there's always a producer or someone who's saying, oh, this is what we want. You know, and they're putting you in a little box of exactly what you can do. So I want to just the Katrina walk panel. So I'm in the process of I've got a, a group of people who all do things that are different than what I like to do together. And so we've been doing a lot of Zoom conference calls and things, getting our decks in a row, um, really hoping to launch this the end of May. So right now I'm just, that's why things are kind of scattered right now because I'm working on getting up to speed with all of my camera equipment again and um, getting myself organized in terms of getting my step outs and things. And for instance, you know, with the book coming out, you know, I obviously, I, one of the things I would need to do is a, surgery class that goes with the book and has step-by-step -step going through all the projects in the book and all that good stuff. So like I said, not a lot to show right now, but hopefully a lot to show this summer. So it's just been kind of crazy, but it's, it's really excited to get my friends on board and, and they're getting excited about it. And, and I, I, I just, hopefully it's going to be a great thing. Nice. Now, are you, um, are you doing it on YouTube behind a paywall? Are you doing it 
on a platform. I'm just curious because I know uh, Becky Goldsmith had done something, I think it was all last year where she did a video class um, and she did it on YouTube and just gave a password for people to get in. So how, how are you doing it? I'm doing it through the Teachable platform. Uh, several friends of mine in the industry are already using Teachable for their own uh, sewing academies or whatever you want to call them and and have done very well with it. And it really is, a, it's a great structure, great platform, um, and handles a lot of the administrative tasks like, you know, billing and things that I don't want to get bog bogged down with it. They yeah. just, they really have a great tool set. Um, it's it's not not free, but it's, it's you know, it's, I think it's reasonable and um, just a really strong platform. And, and as I said, I, I'm using it because other people I know are using it, really like it. So um, that's what we decided to go with. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, Sheila. Hello again. <laughs> well, um, I've been my usual butterfly switching around from one task to another. I've got a number of quilts that I had drawn and I, I start making bits for them. So this is going to be hopefully a butterfly quilt. And um, I've got a pattern that I wrote called Topsy, which is enormous. So I'm now making smaller blocks for that. Um, I've been running my mystery quilt, which is called Trendsetters. And so these are blocks that we've been making for that. Um, but also I bought myself an iPad at Christmas and I've been having a world of fun with it. And mm -hmm. so I started drawing some embroidery patterns and fun. I've started doing some stitching. Okay. So that's been really fun. So I've got to now figure out what I do with those blocks. So that my sewing room does tend to be full of quite a few blocks that are on their way to something or another. <laughs> it sounds like you and Maria work in a similar way. <laughs> yeah, I often do plan the quilt, but then I start making it and then I go, oh, well, I might change this or I might change that. So that's when it sort of goes on hold and and things change so or you end up with two or yeah. three quilts yes yeah <laughs> quite a few <laughs> very good very good well i will show you what i have been doing so i've been making masks so i've made i think 50 masks so far 52 but then um i've been playing with craft tacks and I tried weaving it and this was really sloppy cutting i just did it really quickly to see what it would look like because i want to make um, we're doing a year of craft text, so I was going to make an American flag and I wanted to see if I could make stars. I'm not a hundred percent thrilled with weaving it, but I think that's what I'll go with. And then I made, it's, they're huge blocks. So I'm going to hold it up sideways, but I made a quilt because I got married last summer and I made a wedding quilt for my husband for our bed and it's not done yet, but I did K facet fabric and I did oh, yeah. These are my husband's colors, the reds and oranges, and then my colors are at the bottom. And then we meet in the middle. So it's the biggest quilt I've made so far, and I'm going to quilt it on my very own domestic machine. So we'll see oh, how wow. I do. Yeah, so I tend to be overly ambitious in my projects and then just <laughs> fight my way through them. That's sort of the way I do things. So. Um, yeah, I was showing Galen um, from CNT, and she goes, "Wow, that's big!" And I said, "Yeah, I'm not sure how I'm going to get it on the machine." And she showed me these great little tool by I think it's Easy Quilting. So I'm going to check those out next. Something that rolls it up. So, mm -hmm. okay. So next, what I want to do is just um, talk a little bit about you know just sort of how you're feeling or what words of inspiration you might have for someone. And I'm going to go to you, Shirley. Okay. Ah! <laughs> just you know inspiration like, on what to do currently yeah just sort of what to do currently or you know um one of our authors yesterday just said you know this is a really hard time in the first two weeks I was sort of frozen and I couldn't do anything and so you know mm -hmm. it's just sort of you know if you could say one thing to everybody out there you know what would you say or I would say um Try to do something that you've never tried before and that you always wanted to but didn't have the courage or you didn't have the time and seek it out, whether it's online and uh, with videos or books to buy, uh, anything to try something that's unusual for you and something that you're attracted to and just give it a go. 
because this is a perfect time to kind of decompress with that and get working. And I love embroidery and I know everybody has their choices of what they love. But when I embroider, I feel like I'm accomplishing beautiful projects. It's almost like coloring with um, embroidery floss. And I actually have something to come out of it. Like if you do a puzzle, you, you might have to do the puzzle and then put it away. But with embroidery, you can bring it anywhere. And I just love how you can just come up with some easy things and everything can just fit in the bag. I mean, your embroidery hoop, your muslin, your floss, mm -hmm. your scissors. And, but I really do encourage people to try things they've never tried before. Okay. That's the only way you learn. And I think learning's the best thing. The more you learn, the better you're at. You are at everything, so. You know, I, uh, for me, what I found or what I've, um, aspiring to do is to sort of use this time to get my life in balance. I tend to um, prioritize my deadlines and I'm very deadline driven and now my deadlines have disappeared. And so it's time to make sure I get a really good walk in every day, that I do yoga, that I am attentive to my family um, in a way that uh, I probably am not normally and I should be so I that's that's the thing I'm trying to do with this extra time wonderful wonderful I like that and you're feeding your three three boys right <laughs> again and again and again I can't imagine right now okay. I know because they're 22 18 and 16 so essentially I have four men that I'm cooking for it's a lot i I've done that before, and I know that feeling where it's like there is not enough food in the house for this. So, yeah. yeah. I'm Excellent. going grocery shopping right after this. Okay. I think that, you know, for me, I work from home. So in some ways, it felt like things hadn't changed. But obviously, my travel was cut down, but things hadn't changed. But then I realized I wasn't being as productive. So I think what I'd say to people is that, even if you don't feel things are very different, they are. And you're probably feeling some stress and it's okay. If you're not being as productive as somebody else, it's okay. Cause we all react differently to times like this. For some people, the way to react is to jump into new projects and do new things. And if that's not you, that's okay. And I think we just all need to allow ourselves to be where we are, to react the way we're reacting and then try to figure out things we can do to help us be more positive. Um, and I think learning is a great way. I, I, I think she's right. You know, learning is a wonderful way to start to bring yourself out of some of this stress. And if you're starting a new project and you're trying something new, allow yourself to fail. And, you know, I always say that when I teach a class, the best thing to do is the first time you make a block or try a technique, use it with scrap fabric. So that way you're allowed to fail because we learn a lot more when we do it wrong than when we do it right. So, mm -hmm. and then start doing it with the fabric or the thread or the whatever that you want to use. So I guess what I'd say is it's okay to be wherever you are. And when you're ready, learn something new and enjoy it. <laughs> Have some fun. Um, yeah, I've really taken this time to slow down. Um, I was pushing myself all the time and waking up in the middle of the night. Oh, I could do this and I could do that and I could do that. And I'm, teaching myself to tell my brain it's okay just do it if you want to do it you don't have to do it <laughs> so, um i i spent the whole of easter sunday sorting through my photo file my icloud of pictures which had three years of pictures on and putting things in albums and i realized just how much i'd done and how much travel i'd done last year and I thought, well, no wonder I'm feeling exhausted. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's been time to take a deep breath and just potter about. At the beginning of the four weeks, I thought, oh, I'm going to get so many projects finished. And I haven't actually finished any of those projects. And it's okay. that You don't have to feel like when you come out of it, you're going to be in competition with all your guild for what you've done. It, just do what you want to do. Yep. Agreed. Enjoy it. Agreed. Okay, and Katrina? You know, I, I, I'm a little like Kate in that, you know, we 
my husband and I both work from home and I grew up on a wheat farm in the middle of nowhere and um, it's pretty accustomed to sometimes getting snowed in in the winter time. So, you know, for us, I, I feel incredibly privileged in the sense that this is, it really hasn't affected us that much. And I haven't experienced, I had um, a quilt show, you know, obviously that I, was canceled for me last month and I have another gig, you know, coming up early May that of course has been canceled as well. But, you know, other than that, my deadlines haven't stopped. You know, for me, my workload is pretty much kept on going. You know, I haven't really haven't had the luxury, you know, the, all my publishing deadlines and things still, still coming in. Um, so like I said, I feel kind of privileged that it, it doesn't, hasn't affected me that much in terms of my day to day. But, you know, even as someone who's used to, you know, either I'm working completely in the public or completely at home by myself, um, you know, it still affects us all in strange ways. And, you know, I, I completely agree with Shirley that I think learning is one of the greatest things, gifts you can give yourself during this time, if nothing else, to distract yourself. And I really hope that people are taking advantage of opportunities to find new passions, you know, when we're not allowed to do certain things, we, um, you know, sometimes the best gift we can give ourselves is to find something else that turns our crank, you know, that, that really gets us out there. But also, you know, I just, like I said, I agree with everything everyone else is saying. And just, I really hope people will just, you know, practice some self-care. You know, we, we forget, you know, how much it, it can wear on us. You know, sometimes your hair appointment or your nail appointment or whatever, it may seem like a little thing, but Sometimes for people, I know for me, when I'm really stressed out and traveling all the time, that hair appointment is like the only two hours where I feel like I'm allowed to sit there and veg out and do nothing. So I hope that people will find little ways to pamper themselves, to do a little self-care. Because, you know, even for people for whom this is pretty much just normal everyday life, um, it's still the emotional toll is there. You know, I still really feel it. Uh, my heart breaks for my friends for whom you know, their income has been severely impacted. Um, and so I'm working to try to find ways to help remedy that. But, you know, I just self-care, you know, to take a deep breath, you know, meditate, you know, whatever, but, you know, please take care of yourselves. It's just cut yourself some slack. If you're not accomplishing everything you think you should be accomplishing, you know what? It's a weird time. Just breathe and be good to yourselves. Excellent. Thank you. So, um, you know, one of the things that I think about the most, um, and I think it's what you said, Maria, getting some exercise, getting out there, doing something. Um, I found that to be really helpful because I'm normally, I'm usually walking every morning, um, yoga twice a week, rock climbing once a week. And so um, it, it definitely takes its toll not being able to go do all those things and then figuring out how to get into a rhythm, do them at home, figure out resources that you can use. Um, and my husband, he started jumping rope. And so every day he adds a little more rope jumping and, you know, and we were discussing jump on the cement or jump on the wooden deck. How about the wooden deck? That may not be quite as brutal on your body. Um, but I've also tried some new stuff. I tried punch needle, which I decided I didn't like. Um, I tried embroidery on a stretch canvas, which I ended up throwing in the trash because I looked at it and I went, wow, I really hate this. <laughs> but I tried it. I got pretty far down the path and I looked and I go, I just really don't like it. And I just got rid of it. But so I think all the things that you all have suggested are really great. So I just wanted to thank you all for taking the time out of your shelter in place to talk to me. And I hope you all stay healthy and happy and that we all get to see each other at a show pretty soon and hug and do all the things we're not allowed to do right now. So thank you all very much. Take care and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.